In this video, we'll talk about the physiology of the thyroid gland. We'll talk about the hormones it produces and how these hormones are produced and controlled. So this is the thyroid gland sitting in the neck. So if we enlarge the thyroid gland, what we get? A butterfly-shaped gland that sits on the larynx and below the thyroid gland, we have the tracheal rings. We have already seen this in our previous video. If we zoom into this thyroid gland, it is made up of lobules. These follicles are formed by these cuboidal cells which line together and they enclose a cavity that is filled with colloid. So these are the follicular cells. They are also called as the principal cell. Inside the cavity is filled by colloid. And this whole structure together is called as the follicle. In between these follicular cells there are blood vessels. As we know that the thyroid gland has a very vascular or rich blood supply. Other than the blood vessels there are these other cells which are present between the follicles or around the follicle so they are called as the parafollicular cells and the follicular cells or the principal cells are responsible for the production of thyroid hormone the thyroid hormone which are of two types two main types one contains three iodine and is called as triiodothyronine or T3 other one is thyroxine or T4. It contains 4 iodine. Now before we go into how these thyroid hormones are produced, let's have a look at how they are controlled. So the control center is here. Here we have hypothalamus and this hypothalamus is is control center for whole endocrine system of the body. So This is the hypothalamus and from there hangs the pituitary gland. So this is the anterior pituitary and this is the posterior pituitary. Hypothalamus releases something called as thyrotropin releasing hormone TRH. Thyrotropin releasing hormone. This thyrotropin releasing hormone acts on the anterior pituitary which in response releases thyroid stimulating hormone. So we have TSH that is a thyroid stimulating hormone. Now the thyroid stimulating hormone has a positive or a releasing effect on the thyroid gland. So it acts on thyroid gland which in turn produces T3 and T4. Now these thyroid hormones T3 and T4 they have a negative or a controlling effect on both the anterior pituitary as well as the hypothalamus. That means if there is excess of T3 and T4 it will reduce the formation of thyroid stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary and thyrotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. Thyroid stimulating hormone is also called as thyrotropin. So now we can guess why we have this name as thyrotropin releasing hormone because TRH it causes anterior pituitary to release thyrotropin which is nothing but the thyroid stimulating hormone which stimulates thyroid to release T3 and T4. Now that being said, let's zoom into these follicular cells and see how the thyroid hormone is produced. So these are the zoomed in follicular cells and surrounding here is the blood vessel. 
Now this is a rough endoplasmic reticulum of the follicular cells and these rough endoplasmic reticulum produce a protein called as thyroglobin. This protein is packaged by Golgi apparatus and it is released into the lumen. So thyroglobulin is a protein and it is made up of tyrosine. So these are tyrosine. Now let's come to the blood vessels here. In the blood vessels we, we have the iodide ions, we have sodium ions and we have potassium ions. At the membrane of the follicular cells, herein we have the sodium iodide transporter protein. Now these sodium iodide transporter protein, they transport the sodium and the iodide together inside the follicular cells. The sodium is then transported back to the blood in exchange of potassium by the sodium potassium. The iodide that is now in the follicular cells, it is transported across this inner membrane to the colloid here in the center of or in the lumen of the thyroid lobule by a protein called as pendrid. So this is a protein. Pendrid that transports iodide into the lumen. In exchange, it transports back the chloride ions. Iodide is then oxidized by enzyme peroxidase to iodine. Now, these iodine are attached to these tyrosine rings. So if one iodine attaches to the tyrosine ring, it forms MIT, monoiodotyrosine. And if two iodine attach to the tyrosine ring, it, is, it forms DIT. That is diiodotyrosine. So we have monoiodotyrosine, that is MIT. And we have diiodotyrosine. Okay. Now by the process of conjugation, this MIT can combine with a DIT or a DIT can combine with another DIT to form T3 and T4. So if one MIT, that is monoiodotyrosine, combines with one DIT, we get a T3 hormone. And if two DIT combine together, we get a T4 hormone. So T3 and 4 just indicate the number of iodine of this hormone. Now if you look at the hormone, currently it is still attached or still on the thyroglobin chain. So we have T3, T4, T3, T4, but it is still a part of the thyroglobin chain. So when do we have the active or the separated hormone? So now this hormone chain, this chain of T3 and T4 on the thyroglobulin molecule it is taken up by these principal cells by the process of pinocytosis. So now we have the chain of thyroglobulin with T3 and T4 inside the lysosome. Now these lysosomal hormones, they act on the chain of thyroglobulin to form T3 and T4. Now, during this process, if there is released tyrosine and iodine, it goes back to this cycle of formation of thyroglobulin and the formation and the uptake of the iodine. But a part of T3 and T4 are released into the blood. These T3 and T4, which are now released into the blood, they bind to a transporter protein, that is thyroid binding protein. And once they reach the target, tissue, they are released and there they bring about their function. Now T3 is more active as compared to T4. So when, when they reach the target tissue, T4 is usually converted to T3 and the main role they pl play is in the metabolism and Let's just have a very quick look through what we saw. 
we saw that the thyroid gland is situated in the neck and it sits on the top of the trachea on the larynx and when we zoom into the thyroid gland we have these follicles which are made up of the follicular cells of the principal cells and these principal cells are responsible for the production of the thyroid hormones which are of two types triiodothyronine and thyroxine triiodothyronine is t3 that is it contains three iodine and thyroxine is t4 now inside these follicular cells there is colloid which is made up of thyroglobulin protein in between the follicular cells we have the para follicular cells these para follicular cells are also called as c cells and they are responsible for the production of calcitonin When we talked about the control of the thyroid hormone, we saw that the hypothalamus produces the thyrotropin releasing hormone that acts on the anterior pituitary which in turn produces the thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone or thyrotropin. The thyrotropin that acts on the thyroid gland which produces T3 and T4. Then we talked about how T3 and T4 were produced in the principal cells or the follicular cells. We saw that the rough endoplasmic reticulum produces thyroglobulin which is, which is a protein that is made up of tyrosine. Then we saw how iodine was taken up by the follicular cells by, by sodium iodide transporter and the sodium was pushed back again into the blood vessels by sodium potassium exchange pump then we also saw that iodide was later transported into the lumen through the inner membrane by a pump called as spendrin this spendrin protein was responsible for transporting iodide inside the lumen in exchange of chloride iodide was later oxidized to iodine by the enzyme peroxidase this oxidized iodide that is iodine now gets attached to the tyrosine ring it can now every tyrosine ring can have one iodine or two iodine when it is attached to one iodine it is called as mono iodotyrosine and when two iodine attached to a tyrosine ring it is called as di iodotyrosine now by the process of conjugation one mit combines with one dit to form a t3 and one dit combines with another dit to form a t4 hormone these T3 and T4 hormones are still sitting on the thyroglobulin chain. This thyroglobulin chain is taken up by the principal cells by the process of phenocytosis and then they form this phenocytic vesicle inside which the lysosomes diffuse and they release their hormones and are responsible for releasing T3 and T4. The T3 and T4 hormones then travel into the blood vessels, they combine with thyroid binding protein and are carried to the target tissue where they carry out their function of metabolism and 